Good evening, YouTube. Sean Ponder the second coming to you from a hot, hot, hot Kansas on my way home to Missouri. Welcome, 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 welcome to another edition of Home Work to Home Vibes. Hopefully everybody's day was good. Mine was very good. Before we get started, as always, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TonyGumble21. Also follow me here on Inst on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Show them how to the second. Hopefully, once again, hopefully everybody had a good day of at work or school or whatever your profession is. I know I did. Got a lot accomplished. Uh, first day that I did not leave early. But I will not be. I will be leaving work early tomorrow. Week three in the NFL is about to be upon us. In about an hour and a half, you will have the Jets versus the Browns. And the reason why, you know, both teams, like, you know, I, I like Cleveland, uh, I like New York. I liked it when they had Rex Ryan on the, Rex Ryan as head coach. He was, he was completely funny. He was completely funny. And I watched an episode of Hard Knocks where he just laid everyone out. Like, this man laid everyone out. And he had said some derogatory comments, which I'm not going to say on here. But all he said was, let's go get a snack. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but it was kind of funny how he said it, how he worded it. He's like, you guys are professional football players. Y'all shouldn't be playing like little kids. He said, does everybody understand what the F I'm saying? Let's go get a F. Let's go get a, you know, blank, blank snack. When I saw that, I was now, when I saw that, I was laughing. I was like, now that is a coach right there. But now it's it's more, I'm not going to say that it's watered down. I'm going to say that it's more, the Jets of 2018 is, um, ever since Todd Bowles got into, the, into office, you know, they've been, they've been, they've been somewhat of a contender. Now, this year, they picked up a big quarterback in Sam Darnold. He is impressive. He's impressing everybody. He really is. And, you know, the, the offense is, eh. But you're going up against a team who went 0-16 last season. So, is it going to be easy to beat them? I would not go so far as to say all that. Is it going to be a challenge? Maybe. Maybe it'll be a challenge, but who knows? You know, you have Hugh Jackson at the helm. You have Tyrod Taylor. Uh, Josh Gordon is no longer on the team, so he, so the, the, the Browns no longer pose as a threat. But, you know, anything can happen. Just like last week, anything can happen. I, I predicted that the Seahawks would win on Monday night and they got they got I'm not gonna say killed but they they got beat by the by the uh, Bears a lot of teams that you don't expect to beat these these championship contender teams actually did it you had the Chiefs <laughs> Beating the 
got the Chiefs, the Chiefs beating Pittsburgh. 32 years, 36. 36 years it's been since the, the since the Chiefs last beat the since the Chiefs last beat the 36 years since the Chiefs last beat the Steelers at Heinz Field. You also had you also had Jacksonville picking up from where they left off last year. They were one they were one win away from making it to the Super Bowl. And imagine that. You have a team that has never been to the Super Bowl versus a team that had been in the Super Bowl 12 years prior and lost against the team that beat them. You know, that that to, to an Eagles fan beating the Patriots in Super Bowl 52, there, there's nothing better than that. There is nothing better than that. And like I said, Jacksonville is a good team. They have Blake Bortles. You have a good wide receiving core. You have a great tight end core. You have a strong running back. Guess what? You got a man in the shade. Strategically, guess what? They beat New England strategically. Strategically, they beat New England. Now, was I surprised that New England lost? Yeah. Yes, I was. But at the end of the day, not every team is going to win every game. You know, it, it's been it's been 11 years now since the Patriots went 0-16. Went 16-0. and Did not lose a game until it came to the Giants. And then guess what? The Giants beat them. Not in one Super Bowl, but in two Super Bowls in a span of three years. Now, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that New York, the New York Giants are good now, but they could be in a few years. You know, they just they just picked up a a huge acquisition, uh, a huge per, a huge running back in Shaquan Barkley. Shaquan Barkley. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but the Giants can be a good team. Now, are they going to make it to the playoffs this year? Maybe, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and say yeah, they are. When they haven't played good since, I think it was, I don't know, 2014, probably like 2012 was the last time they played good. That was the last, but they haven't been to the Super Bowl in six years, six and a half, seven years. Now, who can you blame for that? Well, there are a lot of people that you can blame for that. You can blame the coaching staff. You can blame the defense and the offense. You know, there's blame to go all around. There's no person on one team that makes a team good without... Without... Um, and, you know, you're going to ruffle a lot of feathers. You know, Antonio Brown is upset that his boy Le'Veon Bell can't get, can't, doesn't want to sign. But he has to understand that it's a business. If you offer a running back of that caliber that much money, oh, believe me, everybody else is going to want to go for that. Which is why he's sitting out, because he wants a big contract. He saw what. Uh, what Khalil Mack got. He saw what Aaron Rodgers got. He saw what Tyler Lockett got. 
He saw what Aaron Donald got. And guess what? He's saying, everybody got theirs, I want mine. Everybody got theirs, I want mine. That's why he's sitting out, because he knows what he's capable of doing. He knows that he's capable of getting many yards. Heck, you know what? If he were in the game Sunday, the Chiefs probably wouldn't have beaten them. Because he is that fast. And then you put Antonio Brown at wide receiver. Antonio Brown is a beast. I give Antonio Brown credit where credit is due. He can do some amazing he can he can he can catch. This the man can catch. Don't get me wrong. I don't like the Steelers, but I do give I do give them credit. I give Cleveland, I give um, Pittsburgh the credit that it deserves. He is a good, he is a great, he is an elite quarter, uh, elite wide receiver. He is. And I'm being biased here. He won't be as good as Tyreek Hill. No. Tyreek Hill has that those feet. Tyreek Hill has those feet, which they call him the cheetah. You're not going to be able to catch him once he gets downfield. Once he gets downfield, forget it. But back to the game tonight. Um, Sam Darnold, good, good, good quarterback. I've seen him play on TV. He's 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 good. Sam Donald is good. He really is. Um, you know, it's just the it's just the offense. And, and one thing that I do not want to see tonight is penalties. I will be counting how many penalties are in this game because the penalties are just nonsense. What do you what what? You're penalizing these guys for, listen, okay, I've said this many times before, and I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Why change the rules if the rules are fair enough? I can understand the helmet to helmet, but putting your helmet, I don't want to see a lot of penalties tonight, but I know that that's not going to be true. You are going to see uh, at least 12 to 15 penalties. At least. But like I said, I'd rather not see penalties, but it's hard. It's hard as a defense. It's hard as a defense to be cautious of hitting someone. It's hard. And these guys go in day in and day out. They practice. They do what they they do what my uncle Delbert. Uh, they do what my uncle says. Lick their chops. They want to get that game check. But you take tackling away, and guess what? I've said it before, and I will say it again. It is going to be flag football before you know it. It's going to be flag football before you know it. It is. It truly, truly is. And the referees are, as they call, trigger happy to throw that flag. Because every flag they throw, that just hypes them up more. I can count on my hands that Maybe 
during the 2018 season. They're going to be close to 100,000 flags thrown over some nonsense. I, I can pretty much guess that they're going to be over 100, almost 100, about 95 to 99,000 flags thrown between week one on the 8th of September to the Super Bowl. Not counting the Pro Bowl because the Pro Bowl is when everybody just wants to poop and holler and do all kinds of dumb nonsense. But from week one on the 9th to Super Bowl 53, they're going to be at least... Uh, at least, at least near a hundred thousand flags thrown. Pass interference, def uh, defensive and offensive pass interference, roughing the kicker, roughing the passer, unsportsmanlike conduct, delay a game, twelve men on the field, all of that. You know, it's going to be all of that. Is it really needed? No. No. Fans do not pay money to come see a bunch of referees throw flags and call them against a defense and an offense. That's not what they're there for. They are there to watch a game, to see a team score points, to go home and gloat the next day. They aren't there to see 20, 30 flags thrown at. They're not there to see 20, 30 flags thrown at once. No. They came to see a football game. If they wanted to see a flag game, then they could go to their children's flag football. But as I said, Fans do not pay good money to see referees throw penalty flags. I know I wouldn't. That's why I went on Twitter and said all these flag all these penalty flags let these men play. Because that's what makes the game longer. The game that was 2 hours is now 2 hours and 30 minutes. Add an extra 30 minutes for the flags that are thrown. It's not necessary. It is not necessary. And anybody who says that it is necessary, okay, maybe you've never seen football before. But these are guys, and these are men and women and children, who go to the game to see a, a game. They are not there to see a referee throw a yellow flag for anything. You see, in hockey, they, they let these guys play through. If there's a fight, it, it lasts about two minutes, and then that's it. Maybe a minute and 30 seconds. Um, maybe a minute. And then after that, boom. NFL is starting to become the no fun league. Like I mentioned in previous videos, when I was growing up, you could hit all you wanted to. It was someone helmet to helmet, and everybody was good. Now, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. No, you're cut off. And then, to add insult to injury, there is a possibility of you getting ejected. I'm sorry, what? You mean to tell me there's a possibility of a football player being ejected from the game for doing something that his defensive coach wanted him to do? started to lose they've already started to lose their fans 
and now they're wanting to come out with the XFL. Guess what? The XFL was a lot more fun in, during its heyday than the NFL will be in this century. The XFL was fun. Guys get hit. There will be no penalty flags. There will be one penalty almost every game. Every game there will be a penalty. Oh, something, something, you know, in, unintentional. Okay? Something unintentional, boom. Slap on the, slap on the, um, slap on the hand, slap on the wrist, don't do it again. Fine. They're thinking about bringing it back, which I hope they do, and I hope they put the NFL out of business. Because if they put the NFL out of business, I, I know that it's harsh for me saying this, but if they put the NFL out of business, the NFL will know exactly why. Now, is there a possibility of the NFL going going out of business? Eh, maybe. Maybe. That's a possibility. If you don't allow the players to play the game that they've been taught to play by their offense and defensive coaches, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. These guys will revert to the XFL. These guys will play their hearts out. Heck, they'll even go to the in, in, to the uh, Arena League. They will go to the Arena League. And they will play their hearts out for less money. And when you, when you turn on the game, and you see that there is no game, the NFL had a chance to leave everything as it is to leave everything as it is but they decided that no we're not going to do that we're going to put restrictions on how the players play the game and guess what they're getting bit in the behind right now trying to find a player for hitting for doing something that his that his coach has told him to do. Okay. Alright. In the beginning of the night um, 20 uh, I have the Jets coming out on top. 26 to 17. 26 to 17 go the Jets. I'll be back in the morning to I'll be back in the morning to get my thoughts and my feelings on the game tonight. I'm sorry, YouTube, I'm just perturbed. And I'm perturbed that the NFL decided to put another harsh restriction on defensive players playing the game of football. As always, YouTube, follow me here. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TonyGumble21. And as always, live your life the way you want to live it, not the way someone else wants you to live it. Talk to you in the morning. I'm out.